If you're like me, then you can definitely relate to this, all right? Ever since a kid, and there was something coming up later on, either a school play, public speaking thing, a dance performance, boxing match, whatever, my brain would always begin to paint mental images of the worst thing that could happen in those moments. I could mess up my lines. Kian, Kian, visualize everyone silently staring at you and hearing the fluorescent lights as you crumble. I could get knocked out. Kian, really visualize your opponent bum rushing you in the first 30 seconds and then getting his hand raised. Really paint that mental image. This would typically get even worse if my day was subjectively bad, as in I allowed myself to get wound up by someone or I lost something. Chances are, you're exactly like me, mate, because most people are. And now you're here, I'm assuming you're on the journey of taking your first ever driving test. All right, congratulations, buddy. <laughs> and the question is, how do you avoid the absolute pain of fucking it in the first 10 minutes or any minutes? I would question those same things for everything I ever did until I realized something. I've been interested in the concept of self-image for a long time, but it wasn't until I started reading the book Psycho-Cybernetics just a few days ago that I had an epiphany. When you imagine the things that could go wrong and ask yourself, how do I stop this? You're doing the exact wrong thing for your mind. So yesterday, I passed my first ever driving test and let's stop the music for a second because I want to tell you something personal and it happened literally yesterday. Yesterday morning, a few hours before my test, my granddad passed away in his care home. He was a brilliant bloke, you know, and it was the best thing for him overall because he was, you know, not in a good place before that. And his family was around him, so overall it was the best thing that could have happened. I sat around the kitchen table with my family at 5am and we talked about everything. They were, they were literally saying to me, we need to get some good news now, go and smash your test. So I said, yes. And then I passed. The reason I'm sharing this story is not to feel bad about any of us. That's not what this is. It's to say that you can be under tremendous pressure or a bad circumstance and still come out with the best results possible. And it all comes down to belief. In this video, we're going to walk through a few things as to how I took failure out of the equation and passed my driving test first time. And they all revolve around mentality preparation. We're gonna talk about how to stop coming up with these stupid mental images of defeat and how they actually hurt your sub conscious to make your future outcome more like what you visualized. For years I've dismissed the idea of visualization because it became mainstream and cringe how people spoke about affirmations and all that bollocks. But reading up on the science pointed out a few things to me that actually helped me with my test. Visualization, as far as I'm aware, literally just means to paint a mental, emotional image of the desired results you want in something. For instance, if you have a driving test coming up, you specifically visualize the moments where you're handed your certificate. Maybe you shake the examiner's hand. Maybe the drive back afterward where you and your instructor, mine was called Alan, lovely guy, chat about the test. I did this on just a few days leading up to the test and I specifically tried to capture every possible positive moment after the test. The intention was to create some sort of emotional feeling. Well, this sounds like bollocks. I don't need to know wizard stuff to pass. Allow me to explain the rationality behind visualization because I'm sure you're hearing this thinking, well, this is bollocks bollocks because this is what I thought for years about visualization. It's a bit of a weird term. You have two main parts of your brain, the conscious and subconscious. Are you following me? Now, contrary to popular belief, your subconscious is not exactly a second brain. Think of it more like a mechanism that needs to be fed orders by an operator. It's kind of like your conscious is the pilot and your subconscious is the plane. And without the pilot, the plane will pretty much do nothing or crash. <laughs> you get what I mean? Our inner mechanisms are goal-driven things. Our inner mechanisms are goal-driven things. And the way that our mechanism gets fed what goals to pursue is through the conscious mental images we send to the mechanism. So this will look like, for example, someone developing shyness and poor body language over time because they've constantly told themselves they're unlovable or unconfident, sending mental images images of them failing in public situations. This could also look like a person telling themselves for ages they're a great speaker and they visualize people laughing at their jokes a lot and because of that they do pretty well in their first speech. The images and self-image we tell ourselves on a daily basis are what sends the goal signals to our inner mechanism or subconscious if you want to call it that. If you do not 
pick a positive goal to pursue, then your mechanism will choose one for you. And because our brains are naturally negative, you know that yourself, it will aim toward preservation rather than success. We're also unused to intentionally implanting positive mental images of our future. And as a result, we naturally visualize the worst scenarios. The crashing of the car during our test, the bumping into another car as you pull out somewhere, a lorry swerving around the corner, and then the examiner having to press the brakes for you. Because we keep visualizing these things in our minds, we will naturally approach the test scared and uncomfortable, which will lead to a worse drive. I purposely implanted images in my mind of holding my certificate, chatting with the examiner, telling my parents afterwards and them hugging me. This made me show up at the test and drive like I had already passed because I've seen myself pass about 50 times already. So it wouldn't be possible for me to feel uncomfortable in the test. It's important that I visualize the results rather than mid drive, for example, because our subconscious slash mechanism only needs the end goal to be consciously implanted because our subconscious will take over and do the rest actually. My mechanism knows already I should drive like I've already passed. My mechanism knows all of the little tidbits and tips to make sure I drive better. All I needed was the end image and my brain did the rest for me, all right? Trust your brain, all right? Now imagine a different way. Maybe I went into this test visualizing all the mistakes I make during the test, all the things out of my control that could happen like a lorry swerving around the corner. Because the visualization becomes anxiety inducing, these feelings feel real. Therefore, my brain thinks I've already failed and I go into the test driving like I failed. Do you get why I'm saying all this stuff now? To put this even simpler, because I'm sure this might be a little bit confusing. There's you and there's your inner computer. Your inner computer needs conscious mental images sent to it from you in order to know what goal to pursue. On the lead up to your test, I purposely implanted positive images of the end result and literally all of those visualizations came true. I saw it happen in real life which was sick. That's because my inner computer genuinely believed I had already passed. If I did the opposite, I assume the opposite would have happened, all right? This is all visualization is. It's not gay, all right, or stupid, because we do it every day anyway. We constantly visualize things that are about to happen. So you might as well intentionally visualize the good outcomes rather than sitting around imagining what will go wrong. Actionable step for this video, whether you believe this or not, just spend 30 seconds after this video with your eyes closed. And I want you to imagine the examiner in your test saying congratulations to you at the end. Chances are you'll feel the real emotions like it actually happened. See if it works for you. I promise if you give it a chance, this will help you in your driving test, mate. Make your past and present self someone to thank and keep chasing that best version of you five years in the future. All right, I love you, bro. Good luck in your test, all right? You're gonna smash it.